When Einstein was 16, he imagined two thought experiments. First, if he was travelling at the speed of light, holding a mirror in his hand at arm's length, would he be able to see his own reflection? Secondly, he wondered, if he was running next to a beam of light, at the speed of light, what would the ray look like? He later described these two questions as the beginnings of the thought process that led to the theory of special relativity. On the 26th of September, 1905, Einstein published his paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. Einstein stated two basic postulates. One, that the laws of physics are invariant in all inertial frames of reference, and two, that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers, regardless of the motion of the light source. This paper also argued that the ether was superfluous for the transmission of light. The theory of special relativity allowed Einstein to answer his two earlier questions. Firstly, would an observer travelling at the speed of light be able to see his own reflection? The experiment could have one of two possible outcomes. No, the reflection will not be seen, as, according to the ether model of light, the speed of light is always relative to the stationary ether. If Einstein was sitting, facing forward, on a train moving at the speed of light, looking into a mirror, the light could never catch the mirror to form an image. Unfortunately, this violates the principle of relativity. The other possible outcome is, yes, the reflection would be seen. According to the Galilean principle of relativity, it is not possible for an observer in an inertial frame of reference to detect the constant motion with which they are travelling. A separate observer in a stationary frame of reference, however, should see the light from your face travelling at twice its normal speed. Einstein decided that, the reflection would be seen as normal because the principle of relativity should always hold. He also decided that the observer in the stationary frame of reference would also see the light travelling at its normal velocity, as the speed of light is independent of the speed of the light source. The 16-year-old Einstein's second question was what would light look like if you were travelling at the speed of light? Einstein proposed that the speed of light is constant for all observers. All observers see light travelling at the same speed, c, which is approximately 3 by 10 to the 8 metres per second, regardless of their motion relative to the light source. If it were possible to travel at the speed of light relative to the source of a beam of light, the beam of light would appear to be travelling at the speed of light to both a moving and a stationary observer. That the speed of light is constant for all observers, regardless of their motion relative to the light source, means that time passes differently for observers in different frames of reference. From this, Einstein concluded that there is no absolute time. Any statement of the timing of events and the time between events is relative to the frame of reference of the observer. Einstein did not actually prove the constancy of the speed of light in all frames of reference. Rather, it is an axiom, an assumption, from which he derived the rest of his theory, supported by observations such as those by Michelson Morley. In his 1916 book, Relativity, the Special and General Theory, Albert Einstein described a thought experiment involving a train and two flashes of lightning, with the aid of the diagram above. A very long train is travelling along a straight track at a velocity v next to the embankment. Two bolts of lightning simultaneously strike the embankment at points A and B. The light from both lightning strikes reaches point M halfway between A and B on the embankment at the same time. An observer at point M on the embankment sees the lightning flashes as being simultaneous. If the speed of light is not assumed to be the same for all observers, regardless of their relative motion to the source of light, an observer at M1, watching out the window of the train, who is just passing M when the flashes of light arrive at M, 
would also see the flashes as being simultaneous. However, they would see the flash of light from B arrive at a speed of C plus V, which is the speed of light plus the velocity of the train, and that from A arrive at a speed of C minus V, which is the speed of light minus the velocity of the train. According to the theory of relativity, light travels at the same velocity, C, for all observers regardless of the relative motion of the source. In order for both observers to see the light as having the same velocity, C, the distance MB would need to appear shorter to the observer at M1 and the distance MA longer than for an observer at M. As both observers see the light from both flashes travelling at the same speed, but the observer at M1 sees the distance MB as being shorter than the distance MA, the observer at M1 sees the flash from B arrive at M before the flash from A. Einstein stated that we thus arrive at the important result. Events which are simultaneous with reference to the embankment are not simultaneous with respect to the train, and vice versa. This is the relativity of simultaneity. Every reference body or coordinate system has its own particular time. Unless we are told the reference body to which the statement of time refers, there is no meaning in a statement of the time of an event. Summary. Special Relativity. In 1905, Einstein proposed the theory of special relativity. Einstein stated two basic postulates. One, that the laws of physics are invariant in all inertial frames of reference. And two, that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers, regardless of the motion of the light source. Taken together, these postulates require time, length and mass to be different for observers in different frames of reference. Einstein's Mirror at the age of 16, Einstein conceived two thought experiments. Einstein's mirror illustrates that the speed of light is the same for all observers, regardless of the relative velocity of the light source. His second thought experiment, considering what would be seen if you could run as fast as a light beam, also illustrates that the speed of light, as seen by an observer, is independent of the relative velocity of the source of the light. Simultaneity. As a result of the speed of light being the same for all observers, regardless of their velocity relative to the light source, events which are simultaneous for one observer are not necessarily simultaneous for an observer in a different frame of reference. Time, length and mass depend on the frame of reference of the observer as a direct result of the constancy of the speed of light.